Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. And today I'm actually continuing on with my walk up the tower with episode 41 in the manga. And I'm going to be continuing up all the way till 50. So we get on to the test at the end of the first test where Anak is about to cross the bridge. We see everybody in the team 2 panicking because they knew that their team was quite weak. We see uh, Bam being happy for his friends and the fact that they pass passing and then he remembered that he's not on Kun's team right now and he should be hoping for them to fail so that he could follow Rachel and he's thinking about it carefully and he looks through and we then pass to the rankers who are monitoring it and they say Quant lost, uh, lost this one that says that even pro for one of them this was an impossible comeback. He was pushed so far away, so far out of uh, bounds, that there was no way he was going to recover this. And uh, the, the, the fisherman position basically looks at Kun and thinks that he's really a nice guy. I should really like to have someone like that in a team. And uh, the the spear bearer basically says he expected them to be a little bit more powerful, to have a more, more of a fight. There would have been more to his uh, role. And everybody looks at it and... And then Hansan Yu throws in the big curveball where he says, Isn't it too far to judge that it's over? And uh, Little Rose says, what are you talking about? Even though it's quant, it's impossible to climb back up without Shinsu. And in a few seconds, we get back to quant. We see him screaming, making a noise, saying that he wants to kill Kun. And Lowry basically offers him a chance to go up. And finally, we see quant at the top and he manages to touch the it button, catching their it. And basically, this here ensures top scores for everybody on the team because Quan pulled off something impossible and we don't know exactly what the full story is but nonetheless everybody is in the room and they all seem depressed even Kun seems depressed but we know that Kun is the one who pulled this all off and um, basically everybody roots him on and says that he did fantastic and we get a little funny uh, clip where uh, Shibisu and Laure have a little bit of a fight and that was just about it. So nonetheless, everybody gets ready for the next exam. And the next team is in. Now, in the next team, you have Ender Rossi, you have Balm, and you have Rachel also in that team. So things are a bit more odd for that team. They don't have as many powerful members. They don't have a Rat, they don't have a Kun, they don't have an Anak. Uh, but basically, they, they left with the subpar members of the team. They have Levin, they have one or two other members, and it really looks bad. Everybody from the rankers is basically they're going to lose, except for Ren. Ren says that he feels that it was fair. Uh, there's somebody in this team who is really talented. He may not be the most powerful, but uh, he could be the greatest jackpot from them all. He has this chance of pulling jackpot where there is no jackpot. And and everybody is looking at it really weird. Then we get Quan's little flashback of how uh, Kun tricked him. And we see that Lera Rowe is um, conflicted on what score to give uh, Kun because he betrayed his team. And he then shows him the real team that uh, Kun is playing for. And that he has 10 members who he wants to take with him no matter what. So nonetheless, they look at it and they go through a little discussion about, you know, he's carrying a load while he can carry a load. Because if you go too far, it will become dangerous. And then we get the little hint that Han Sang Yu really wants to kill Kun. And uh, one other thing that makes it absolutely hilarious, when Ren says that this is quite fair, uh, Han Sang Yu is shocked and everybody else is like, aren't you the one who said uh, they were made equally? And um, it, it basically becomes this big joke. And then he says that he, he got um, 
What's his name? He, he got uh, a lottery ticket and it's just going to be like this regular who's in this team who is there amazing. And everybody is getting ready. Now, they do have hats on the team, but honestly, they have hats, they have Anna. You know, sorry, they have hats, they have Ender Rossi, and that's just about their powerful members. Bam isn't a very powerful member, he's just very talented. So, next thing we see that Quant is really, really upset and he doesn't want to allow them to have their way. Now, what Kun told Quant was really important and it does play a part down the line, but I don't see a reason in hiding it out. He basically set it up to be a double way plan because if he told Quant to protect Rachel, he wasn't going to get it. If he told Quant to kill Ho, he wasn't going to get it. Instead, he told Quant to knock out Rachel because he's not going to get Rachel knocked out. He'll protect Rachel in that case to make sure that he ruins Kun's day, just like Kun ruined his day. Now, following up with all of this, the next team that is in is just absolutely in disarray. They can't find the leader and finally, finally someone with true power comes up and just takes leadership from them. That's Ender Rossi and she lays out her plan. And basically her plan was to take Balm with her and all the fishermen and move up. She wants to eliminate the fishermen so she can pass. And Finally, they all start their crazy plans, each person hatching their own little diabolical scheme. We find Ho um, hatching his scheme, Serena talking about the fact that um, she can't believe uh, how she's been behaving in here and she doesn't think that she has the right to keep going up because she can't imagine walking on those who have uh, been by her side and she asks Ho if uh, how he would feel if that happened to him and he said he'd understand because this is the tower that's how it works and she's shocked to hear that there then we get Hats and um, Paracule uh, and their little confrontation where he basically beats the two of them and he tells them they can pull off their plan he's just gonna try it for them he's gonna fight the uh, Renka right and, and that ends uh, 43 and we're moving on to 44. Now there's going to be a lot to talk about for this entire test at the end of it regardlessly. In the next chapter we get Hats facing off against uh, Quant. Now Quant isn't at full power and Quant is holding back substantially and as he fights with Hats you see that Hats uh, really puts up a good fight and Quant decides that he's going to take out some of his anger on him. Following this we get uh, the flashback to uh, and the Rossi and Bam and they're bu busy talking and they're talking about how she was raised. Now this forms a critical part about what changes in her and when she starts to fall in love with Bam. Because trust me this is the point where she is totally head over heels for him. She speaks about how um, she grew up with tasting stale and terrible bread and then one day she finally tasted the best of it and uh, she asked me if he knows how and he says somebody else showed uh, care and shared with you and she's like uh, And she was like no And they got the, the right answer. She killed them all and ate everything that she wanted And finally when the ranker was spotted and the Rossi enacts a plan where she breaks the lighthouse that's with them And she tells anybody who passes the line that she's drawn she's going to kill so they say some things and basically that's the end of it. We know that this is a little bit of a ploy, but I don't want to get too in detail with it right now. I want to actually pass to the end of 50 because this has such a massive amount of it uh, plotted out. Now there's three uh, fishermen with her. She starts beating them and hurting them. Only two need to be knocked out for, uh, for her to go through. But if she knocks out all three, then she's guaranteed a pass and Anak is guaranteed a pass. And one of the two injured from this Sorry, there's two fishermen in the scheme who she needs to knock out. If she knocks them both out, one of the other fishermen will come through and, you know, things get crazy. So basically, uh, they keep having their fight and they're talking and things are going crazy. We then get back to Hutz vs. Quant and uh, basically, Hutz is putting up a fantastic fight and he's still not uh, doing very well and he tries to hide in the shadow. And finally, he manages to get uh, a hit in. Quant gets a hit in on Hutz. And Hutz grabs him and holds him in place because he has a very strong grip. 
and he says go for your spear bearers revolution and Parakul ends up betraying him. They end up uh, ditching him and going for another plan and we then move on to the next episode. Now there's not a lot of um, a lot of broad spectrum um, stuff coming out on this uh, section. It's just tiny little things that are being exposed all at once. And we see how strong Hats is and the fact that um, Quant really has some um, some respect for the fact that he put up such a good fight and he beats him and leaves him there. And uh, so he explains that that's not the only betrayal of this team. Now betrayal being something crazy because the other team had a betrayal and this team has a betrayal and it's driving Quant nuts and Quant is really really angry already. So finally we get back to the fisherman versus um, Anak. So sorry, not Anak and Rossi. And one of the fishermen has a big secret. He has an ignition weapon on him. Now honestly ignition weapons are crazy as it stands. And uh, one of the two fishermen call Rossi a witch. And Bam says stop and he tries to defend one of them. And they attempt to attack him. In which case Rossi hits them and hurts them really badly. And finally, Namada is activated in the hands of um, of the swordsman. But that's where it ends. We then get Levin screaming that he lost um, sight of the of the the, the fishermen. And uh, are they playing hide and seek with them? And we see that Rachel is in charge of them, and they're looking through everything. They're trying to find their way around. And finally we get uh, Ho approaching Rachel to, to enact his plan. So things are falling apart really quickly and as I'm explaining there's not a lot of time passing by. We've seen that time is passing in small motions but with big events across the entire chapter. So yeah that is what we're seeing but there's a lot happening all at once. So finally Ho pulls her out, he asks for her to drop her visibility from her lighthouse and then we go to the point where Namada had already attacked and Bam took the hit for Enderossi and he's standing against all of this here and Ho explains that the person who's trying to take out Bam is him and then we get the next thing where Bam is hurt and he explains he could never betray someone to go up and um, he doesn't care how beautiful the stars are he's gonna do this here all just for her and he ends up walking out of there and one of the swords, or one of the fishermen says, looks like she got dumped by the guy who she wanted for herself. And after this year, she gets really angry and she beats them up completely. And Bam starts heading away and finally Rachel's uh, lighthouse disappears. So he heads off immediately to the starting area to go and um, get her. At this point, Quant ends up where Ho is and he says that he is the god on the stage and that Ho needs to pray that he doesn't hurt him because he doesn't want anyone to die. So following this we see that there's no connection and we get Ho uh, being confronted by Quant and he's like he's been betrayed. And as he does it he's slowly about to walk back when one of the spear bearers attempt to actually attack the ranker. And they miss and all of a sudden uh, they say uh, we'll team up with you Ho, all you've got to do is make sure that you get him to work with us and basically work to what we want. And so he steps into the safe zone and at this point Quant can't do anything and he says okay well if you're crazy I can't save her because they're in the safe zone and if I turn to deal with those spear bearers the girl is dead. And he thinks about it and he says do you think I care if she dies? Do it. But you should be prepared for the consequence. If anyone dies here, you all dead. And Ho basically freaks out a little bit. And finally Baum arrives and he asks, what are you doing? Why are you holding Rachel like that then? So Ho basically says, if you want Rachel to survive, you're going to have to fight the Ranker. And Quant looks over at uh, Balm and he basically is like, 
are you really gonna do it and uh bam actually goes for it and he's about to start it and quant uses reverse flow technique on him and tells him if you want to um if you want to to save the girl you're gonna have to do this to the guy and that's how your only way of uh, saving her so he says feel the flow of the shinsu in your body and try and mimic it now this was a lie from quant quant knows that it's impossible for a regular to do it and they break apart and Bam uses the technique on Ho instantly and it's at this point that Bam manages to get Rachel but he was a bit late because Ho managed to stab her already and uh, Quan basically says if he's like if, if Bam is lucky he might be able to save the girl and when he looks there and he sees it and he expresses he really is a monster now we should understand that this is the end of part 8 but there is a lot being hinted at about how powerful Balm is and how powerful that one little technique is. How close to the end of the, the level he is. So we catch into 49 with uh, the fishermen fighting against Anderossi and she finally takes them both down in the scene. We see them beaten up really badly and she decides she's going to take Namada from the swordsman and she's going to head over to where Bam is because now it's time for her to enact a plan and catch the it so that she can get the points. At this point, Ho thinks to himself about uh, how powerful Bam is and how he had to sacrifice everybody he ever knew just to get the little power he had and that Bam didn't have to sacrifice anything. So Ho finally commits suicide on the spot, stabbing himself in the heart. And Bam starts screaming, Ho, why did why did you? Please don't die, Ho, please don't. And he's crying over somebody who died. And Quan thinks to himself, this is ridiculous. In this tower, you are like a shark. And basically, why are you crying over a small little minnow who could never even stand by you? He is never going to follow with you. Uh, and he's basically exclaiming, if that talent is real, you are never going to be able to walk with all of these baby fish or tiger and uh, tiger and baby cats right that's the way that quant puts it in a reiteration of the first translation okay so finally um and the rossi appears and basically uh we see quant say oh i forgot about the other tiger and that is the end of 49 we now reach number 50 and 50 is where things get crazy i have to follow this here down to the t but there's a lot to explain already just because what Balm did was so crazy. So we get this um, impact of the entrance and basically uh, Levin is screaming why didn't you come here. Serena is explaining why weren't you here. If, if you hadn't disappeared we would have been able to uh, complete this properly. And basically we get the whole confrontation between the two where Serena gets a smack in on Ender Rossi. And Ender Rossi explains that... Uh, are you sure you should be fighting me? We need to go in and fight this. And basically, Rachel is stabbed in the back and she's in a bad condition. So, and the Rossi tells him, if you really want to save her, you're going to have to help me. It's up to you to decide. The faster we end this year, the faster it is. You can either betray me or you can help me. It's up to you. And finally, they go in to fight Quant. And Quant is ready to fight her and he's fighting with her. And all of a sudden, he sees, uh, sorry, now all of a sudden Bam goes back through his past and he thinks about everything that just happened in front of him. And as they're fighting, Bam decides to uh, say, hold on, hold, because that's the only chance he has is going to join the fight. And it ends right here. Now, we know what's about to happen and the fact that Bam joins the fight. But the fact that he copied a ranker's technique, and we're going to explain how crazy this technique is. When he reaches D rank regular at the name hunt station, uh, not the name hunt station, at the, the first station on the Hal Train arc, we find the next person who is amongst the regulars who can use reverse flow technique. And he has been training for over a hundred years and he just managed to master the technique. And we get a hint of how crazy powerful it is and that it is something above the regular rank of uh, regular. It is so far up that it has taken this person hundreds of years to master. Their aging is slowed and 
the whole process of aging within the tower is crazy to start with. But that is where episode 50 truly gains some of its um, major context. If Bam puts up any type of a fight against the Ranker, even without the use of Shinsu, because he already used the Shinsu, it makes absolutely no sense that he is this powerful. You have to be you have to be so talented to be able to do a technique at that level that comparing it to anything else that they are doing is insane. Bam's true power hasn't even started to awaken. And when he shows his true power, it is just insane. He has power greater than a princess of Jahad. He was most probably the most powerful regular on this floor at this moment. Even though he is actually an irregular. He is the most powerful individual on that floor. That includes all of the other rankers on that floor. They haven't even tasted what he has hidden. And the reason for that is quite simple. Because Bam doesn't know what he has hidden. And yeah, that's the total to all of this. And that is what happened in this section. Now, obviously, there's more to come with the next section where the fight with the ranker actually happens and Bam joins in and all of that and all the crazy analysis and the whole setup to the next test. That is a more important part to go through and that is going to be episode 51 to 60. Hope to catch you all then and have a good day.